Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Quite a few scenarios in Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 have a goal that requires you to reach a certain park value. When playing these scenarios, you probably have realized that as you build up your park, your park value generally increases. And also that it can decrease by quite a lot if you don't build anything new for a while. This used to frustrate the hell out of me because I had no idea why this was happening. To prevent any further suffering for you guys, I will explain how exactly the park value and the company value are calculated and I will also give some strategies to get the high park value very quickly. If you want to skip the explanation of the calculation and go straight to the strategies to help you increase your park value, go to the timestamp that's currently on the screen. Before we start, make sure to not confuse the park value with the park rating. The park value is the number right here that is supposed to be an estimation of how much your park is worth, while the park rating is this bar in the bottom left that tells you how well your park is operating. Also, I want to thank Dirkling for writing his guide to the park value which this video is based on. The guide is linked in the description. The park value consists of two different parts, one very simple part and one quite complicated part. The simple part is the number of guests in your park multiplied by 7. So if you have 2000 guests in your park, you will get 14000 park value from that. This contribution is pretty much negligible in almost all parks. This park has a little over 3800 guests, which contribute about 26,700 park value. That may seem like a lot, but the total park value of this park is about 800,000, meaning that the guests contribute less than 4% to the total value. Now onto the second, more complicated part, which is the contribution of the rides. Every ride with excitement, intensity and nausea sets that have been calculated contributes to the park value, even if the ride is closed or has never even been opened. This is the formula for the contribution of each individual ride in your park. There are three factors here, the ride value, the number of riders in the last 5 minutes and the ride bonus value. Let's first look at the last two variables because they are the simplest. The number of riders in the last 5 minutes speaks for itself and the ride bonus value is the value that the ride has in this list. We will use this looping coaster as an example. Currently this ride has had 48 riders which were all in the last 5 minutes. This number will change over time but for this calculation we will use 48. If we look up the ride bonus value for the looping coaster, we can see that it is 95. Now all we need to know is the ride value, which is a little more complicated. To get the ride value, we first need to multiply the excitement rating, intensity rating and nausea rating by their respective values. These values are different depending on the ride type and can be found in this list. Both this list and the right bonus value list can be found in the description. If we continue with the example of the looping coaster, we need to find the looping coaster in this list and see what the values are. When we find it, we can see that the values for excitement, intensity and nausea are 50, 30 and 10 respectively, which is the most common set of values in the game. Now we need to multiply the excitement rating by 50, the intensity rating by 30 and the nausea rating by 10. We also need to multiply them all by 100. Next, we need to add the three numbers together and divide the result by 1024 and then round down the answer to a whole number. If we have not made any mistakes, we currently have a value of 49 for our looping coaster which we could call the base ride value. To get the final ride value, we need to multiply by one more number, which is the age value of the ride. This is the value that makes rides become worth less and less over time, 
And this is also the place where OpenRCT2 is different from RST2 Vanilla and RST Classic. For OpenRCT2, this is the list of age values. For writes under 5 months old it's 1.5 and then it slowly decreases as the writes get older all the way down to 0.08 when the write is between 16 and 25 in-game years old. Once it reaches the age of 25, it gains monument status, which makes the ride worth a bit more again. There is one more thing that influences the ride value of a ride, and that is how many of that ride type you have in your park. If you have only one ride of a certain ride type in your park, nothing changes. But if you have more than one of the same ride type, for example wooden coasters, all wooden coasters in your park will have their ride value multiplied by 0.75. There are some unexpected coaster types that are considered the same type by the game, such as the Hyper Coaster and the Corkscrew Coaster. Here is a list of all coaster types that count as the same type. Our example coaster is brand new, the only looping coaster in the park, and we're playing in OpenRST2. So we need to multiply the base ride value of 49 by 1.5 and then once again round down. This gives us a final ride value of 73. Now that we finally have the ride value, we can plug it into the formula we started with to get the amount of park value that this ride contributes. We already determined that the number of riders in the last 5 minutes was 48 and that the ride bonus value is 95. So the right side of the formula is 428. Multiplying that with the ride value of 73 that we just determined, we can calculate that this coaster contributes 31,244 euros to the park value. If instead of brand new this coaster was 3 years old, which is 24 months, this coaster would only contribute 20,972 euros to the park value as the age value is now 1 instead of 1.5. If this ride was new but had not had any guests ride it yet, the ride side of the formula would be 380 instead of 428 which results in a park value contribution of 27,740 euros. You can see that unless your coaster gets a lot of riders per hour, this doesn't impact the park value that it contributes too much. It is much more important to keep your coasters young, as the age value is the biggest contributor in lowering the park value. Earlier in the video, I said that there was a difference in the age values between OpenRST2 and RST2 Vanilla and RST Classic. Here are both tables side by side. For rides older than 13 months, the values are the same for all games, but for the top two age brackets there's a difference. Whereas in OpenRST2 you multiply by 1.5 and 1.2, in Vanilla and Classic you add 30 and 10 for rides younger than 5 months and 13 months respectively. For our looping coaster this means that if I was playing in RST Classic or RST2 Vanilla, the final ride value would be 49 plus 30 or 79, which is slightly higher than the 73 we got in Open RST2. For this coaster and the most other coasters the difference is quite small, but it gets absolutely crazy for rides with low stats. Take this brand new merry-go-round. A merry-go-round has very low stats, so it only has a base ride value of 5. In OpenRST2 we now multiply this with 1.5 to get a final ride value of 7. However, in Vanilla and Classic we add 30 instead to get a massive ride value of 35, which is 5 times as high as the one we got in OpenRST2. This means that in Vanilla and Classic a brand new merry-go-round generates 5 times more park value than it does in OpenRST2. 
Between 5 and 13 months old the difference is a factor of 2.5 and after 13 months they're the same. Because of this difference, if you build a lot of flat rides in a park with a park value goal in vanilla, you're going to be really disappointed when your ride turn 5 and later 13 months old as your park value will absolutely plummet. So, to recap, the park value consists of two parts, your rides and the number of guests in your park. Every guest contributes 7 park value and every ride contributes a value depending on its stats and the number of guests it has had in the past 5 minutes. The older a ride gets, the lower its contribution to the park value gets and in RC2 Vanilla and Classic, very new rides with low stats contribute disproportionately much to the park value. Before I teach you how to abuse the formula for the park value, I want to quickly go over the company value. When you complete the goal of a scenario, it always mentions the company value that you had at the very moment that you completed it. You can find the company value of your park right below the park value, which is because they are very closely related. The company value is simply your park value plus the money you have in the bank minus your loan. Let's do a quick example. This Rainbow Summit Park has a park value of 439,072. First we need to add the money we have in the bank to that, which is 1294 euros, and then we need to subtract our loan, which is 44,000 euros. This leaves us with a company value of 396,366 euros. You may notice that the game says 396,365 instead. This is because the park value and the company value only update every in-game day and between the last update and when I paused the game I have made one more euro. A consequence of this formula is that if you have a very high loan and a very low park value, you can get a negative company value, like this scenario of Forest Frontiers where I beat it with no rights. Now that we know how everything works, let's abuse the hell out of it. My first tip is, build small rights instead of big ones. Assuming that all other factors are the exact same, a ride with all three stats twice as high as another ride will contribute twice as much to the park value. However, to build a ride with twice the stats costs much more than twice as much. Therefore, it is more efficient to build small rides, especially when you're building roller coasters, if you want to get the most park value for your money. Here is an example. The purple Giga Coaster is twice as expensive as the orange Giga Coaster, but it gives less than 28% more park value. If you would build an even cheaper Giga Coaster design, like one that's twice as cheap as the orange coaster for example, it's even more efficient. As we have discussed before, aging rides are by far the biggest reason that your park value decreases. If only there was a way to prevent your rice from aging. Well, there is. And of course, we can abuse it. In the beginning of the video, I said that all rides that have their excitement, intensity and nausea stats calculated contribute to the park value, even if they're in test mode or are closed. It just so happens that rides will only age if they have been opened at some point. This means that you can build a ride, test it, never open it, and it will never decrease in value. The downside is that you don't make any money with it, but this isn't really a problem in parks where guests pay for the entrance and not the rides. The third strategy is to abuse the fact that all three stats contribute to the ride value for most ride types. There are a few transport rides that have a negative value for the nausea rating, but other than that, all stats increase the value for all rides. If you remember the example we did with the looping coaster, its values for excitement, intensity and nausea stats were 50, 30 and 10 respectively. 
This means that if all three stats are the exact same, intensity contributes 3 times as much as nausea and excitement contributes 1.67 times as much as intensity. Almost every ride has a similar distribution where excitement contributes the most, followed by intensity and lastly nausea. We often try to maximize the excitement rating on our rides and indeed the excitement rating contributes the most on almost every ride. However, while it is very difficult to get an extreme excitement rating, it is very easy to get an extreme intensity rating. Take a look at this LIM coaster. It gets launched at the maximum speed possible, does a small unbanked turn, does two loopings and then another unbanked turn. To make it even worse, it is set to do 7 laps. The extreme lateral G's combined with the very high positive G's and 14 inversions give it almost 24 intensity. This ride contributes 29,700 euros to the park value. That is less than the looping coaster, but this LIM coaster is just over 4 times as cheap as that looping coaster, so it gives much more park value for its price. On top of that, you don't have to open the ride since no one will ride it anyway, so it never decreases in value. Two non-coaster rides that can pull off this strategy as well are the Roto Drop and the Launched Freefall in Downward Launch Mode. They don't have a support limit and they are very cheap, so all you have to do is build them as tall as you can and you'll get a lot of park value for very little money. You can see me using this strategy in my speedrun of the rock and roll scenario on my second channel. A ride like this combines all the strategies we've discussed so far into one very overpowered way to beat park value scenarios. Make a bit of money, put down a bunch of these bad boys and boom, nearly unlimited park value. Sometimes you can even get enough park value to beat the goal from just maxing out your loan at the start of the scenario and spending it all on these tiny scary rides. There is one more strategy that only works in RST2 Vanilla and RST Classic as it abuses the fact that brand new rides add 30 to the ride value instead of multiplying it by 1.5 in those games. We've discussed that rides with low stats contribute way too much to the park value for their price, so all we have to do is build a load of cheap rides and never open them so that they don't decrease in value. Merry-go-rounds, enterprises, haunted houses, they all work great. If building closed rides feels too cheaty, you can also just build a lot of them within 5 months of the goal deadline, as they first decrease in value after 5 months. The best ride for this is undoubtedly the Tiny Maze, which I like to call the Stu Death Maze, named after Stu, who started the trend of dropping your guests into the voice with this one tile maze. Anyway, this maze costs only 27 euros, which makes it the cheapest ride in the entire game. And in Vanilla and Classic, it gives 5760 euros of park value. If we divide the park value it gives by its cost, we can see that it gives 213 euros of park value per euro spent which is unmatched by any other ride in the game. The looping coaster example gives about 5 euros of park value per euro spent and the tallest rotodrop possible gives about 25 euros per euro spent. This tiny maze is so cheap and so overpowered that even in OpenRST2 with the nerfed ride value for new rides, it is still the most money efficient way to generate park value with 53 euros of park value per euro spent. The maze does not have a test mode, so in order to get the stats you do need to open it, which will make it start aging. To get around this, you can build a whole lot of these mazes, keep them closed and only open them within 5 months of the deadline. You don't actually need any guests to go into the maze to get the stats. 
The only downside to this maze is the ride limit. You can only build 255 rides in a park in RCT2, which is plenty for most parks, but if you only use mazes, it can provide an issue. In Vanilla and Classic you can get over a million park value with 255 brand new tiny mazes, which is plenty. But in OpenRST2, 255 tiny mazes give less than 300,000 park value, which isn't enough to beat some park value scenarios. Keep that in mind if you're going for the tiny maze strategy. So. There you have it, a detailed explanation of how the park value works and 4 different ways to abuse it. I hope you learned something from this video and now have a little less trouble with the park value scenarios. I don't recommend that you only use intensity bombs and tiny mazes from now on as that's a rather boring way to play the game most of the time. But if you need a bit more park value for little money, you can always put down one or two of these overpowered rides to help you out a little. If you like this video, consider giving it a like and maybe even subscribe or support me on Patreon if you really want to. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.